You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. All right. I'm Dr. John Alm, the Associate Program Director from KU. Uh, so this is us welcoming you to the heartland, home of the greatest barbecue in all the world, according to Travel Magazine this year. So if you like food, we got a good place to go. Uh, with me tonight, I've got our Chief Resident, Dr. Murphy, uh, our PGY2, Dr. Francio, uh, Dr. Yoon's representing our PGY2 class, and from our PGY1 class, Dr. Mayan. Um, great to have you here. We're excited to give you a little brief discussion about us, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Murphy right now. All right, thanks, Dr. Alm. Thank you guys all for being here. Let me uh, see if we can't get our slide deck pulled up. Professional teams, Sporting Kansas City, Royals, and Chiefs, um, all of whom have won a championship in the last decade. The nice thing about Kansas City and why it's a great place to live, it's centrally located. So, you know, regardless of where family and friends might live, you're either uh, a reasonable car ride away or a short flight away from, from uh, most major destinations. Um, the cost of living is really unbeatable. It's uh, some of the best in the country. There's a lot of variety as far as places to live. So regardless of Kind of what flavor you're looking for from a housing standpoint we we uh we have that available to you we have residents that live downtown we have some that live just on the outskirts of downtown and the crossroads or westport or the plaza um, if you're more of a, a family oriented person um, you can live a little bit further out in the suburbs um, either in like the roland park area or overland park all of those places are within 20 minutes of of the main campus um, we have a good food scene here, Dr. Dr. Allman's in the barbecue, but we have a lot more to offer than just barbecue in Kansas City. So regardless of what kind of food you're interested in, um, that's, uh, that's gonna be easily found here. Here's a quick snapshot of the current uh, residency program. We have 12 residents, four per, four per class. A few pictures of our medical campus. We really have three major towers with plans to build a fourth tower. In the future, in the top left corner, you'll see um, our most recent build, which opened up, I think, in 2018, 2019-ish. That's the Cambridge Tower. That's where most of our neurology, neurosurgery, and orthopedic um, specialties are housed. In the top right corner is a brand new state-of-the-art um, uh, building for our medical school. It has two simulation centers in there. It has a lot of small and large group uh, study rooms that are fully equipped with uh, plasma screen TVs, uh, whiteboards, anything that you may need from an educational standpoint. Uh, the bottom left is kind of the old hospital, which has more or less been converted to offices at this point. And then the bottom right picture is a picture of our heart hospital. Our acute inpatient rehab unit is actually located just across the street from our main campus. Um, we are a 29 bed unit. Um, it is uh, relatively new, it opened back in 2014. So almost all of the, the rooms are up to date. All of our equipment is, uh, is, is equally up to date and, and uh, we have a lot of um, variety in the modalities we're able to offer our patients. Um, one of the benefits of being um, uh, affiliated with the, the University of Kansas Hospital is we have all of our consultants readily available to us and so, if, if we had a, a consultant that was um, on board during a patient's acute stay and we want them to continue following during their rehab stay, we're able to do that. If we need to get a, a different specialty involved while they're in, in rehab, um, it's, a, it's an easy avenue to get them involved. Um, we also have our rapid response team that comes across uh, to our, our rehab unit. And so we have support during uh, any uh, code-like situations. We have on-staff pharmacists. They do not round with us, but they are uh, routinely following our patients and reviewing orders and, and medication lists on a daily basis. And we also have weekly team rounds where, they, where we sit in with not only nursing staff and therapists, but our pharmacist is there as well. And so we're able to 
um, really provide high quality care for our patients. As far as our rotations go, um, we have uh, several inpatient rotations, um, a very robust consult service. We're at 773 and growing um, uh, medical center, uh, level one trauma center. Um, because of that, uh, we have a lot of um, heterogeneity in our consults. Um, while most of them are uh, post-acute placement, we do see uh, consults for spasticity and back limb pump management, things of that nature. Um, as far as our other inpatient rotations go, we have really three primary teams. We have a TBI, SEI, and then stroke slash general team. Um, and then that general kind of encompasses a lot of different uh, diagnoses from burns to, transplant, to transplants to LVADs, uh, polytrauma, amputees. Um, so if you name it, we, we probably see it. Um, we also do a rotation at Rehab Hospital of Overland Park, which is a new rotation, but that's a community-based ERF, and so it'll provide a little bit different flavor and get you out of the academic setting and provide that exposure while you're uh, in your residency training. We do a pediatric inpatient rehab rotation at Children's Mercy. And then from an outpatient standpoint, uh, you're going to get ample exposure to MSK, uh, sports, and, uh, and, and pain. Our Indian Creek rotation is uh, one of the uh, best rotations that we have. You're spending usually two to three half days in the floral suite, another half day doing uh, ultrasound guided injections. You'll get exposure to uh, anatomic and ultrasound guided uh, peripheral joint injections. You'll see 10X with Dr. Siegel. We do some cryoneurolysis with Iovera. Uh, so there's a lot of variety from an interventional standpoint that you'll get exposed to. Our general outpatient rotation, uh, there's a lot of bread and butter uh, rehab. We do a lot of spasticity management with Botox. Uh, we do have a half day uh, in a multidisciplinary TBI clinic with our neurosurgery colleagues. And you usually do about two half days of EMG. Um, so you're being exposed to EMG early on in, in your residency training as well. And we also do a full day with Dr. Clark uh, doing cancer rehab. We do have an outpatient children's um, rotation as well. So uh, if you're interested in, pedi in pediatrics, you're not only going to be exposed to the inpatient side, but also the outpatient side. We do spend time at two VAs, the Kansas City VA and the Leavenworth VA. The KCVA time is primarily MSK and spine related. They do have a half day of PRP clinic and you do do a half day of uh, floral time uh, with our, our, our paying colleagues there. The KCVA neuro slash EMG rotation is a split rotation. Um, you'll do half your time in the outpatient neurology center um, where you'll do a lot of headache management. And the, the other half of the rotation, you will be a, the junior resident uh, with a senior resident and an attending doing EMGs. And then the Leavenworth VA is a, is a really uh, encompassing rotation um, where you'll touch on uh, general rehab, MSK, amputee, PO, um, SCI. Um, you do spasticity management, a lot of peripheral joint injections, um, and then uh, it's probably one of our best EMG rotations as well. The rotation schedule, we have 12 residents, and so all of our residents will do six-week blocks. Most of your inpatient time is done uh, early on during your PGY2 year. You'll do about seven and a half weeks or seven and a half months of inpatient and the rest of that time will be in the outpatient setting. And then as you progress into PGY3 and PGY4 year, you'll do less inpatient um, and more outpatient, but you're still getting uh, at least three months of dedicated inpatient time so that you're still uh, maintaining and refining those inpatient skills. And then these are just some pictures of our, our different rotation sites. And I will turn it over to our PGY3 resident, Dr. Francio, who will. Thanks, Murphy. Appreciate it. Thank you for sharing the slides. If you want to just kind of keep going. I just shared everyone a couple of uh, documents on, uh, on the chat box here. One is a handout uh, that has a little bit of information on our program, also has a video about our program and a video about Kansas City. Um, and then I also shared the slides here for today that you guys can uh, follow up later at home. I'm going to run through this stuff here because it's really basic. So in terms of elective, um, our program has uh, two 
uh, has a block of elective time for two weeks for each PGY2 year, PGY3, and then PGY4 year. And then you can choose a variety of options, uh, palliative care, PNO, wound clinic, neurology, whatever um, you, you are more comfortable with and would like to go. Next. In terms of procedure exposure, my experience has been that from day one, residents have uh, hands-on exposure to procedures. Uh, starting with EMG, the first day in the clinic, they will give you uh, the EMG uh, machine and you can start on with the supervision of the attending physician. The same thing is for Botox and uh, peripheral joint injections and uh, any other kind of spine procedures as well. Uh, next slide. Mentorship is something uh, that we take serious here in our program. Uh, early in PGY2 year, uh, we're going to have a match between a faculty uh, attending provider and a uh, PGY2 um, new resident based on mutual career interests such as sports, spine, neuro rehab, and then that focus on uh, career mentoring, research opportunities, uh, business of medicine, fellowship applications, etc. We also have a research track, it's relatively new. Um, we basically have a longitudinal track for the second, the third and fourth year of residency while you're here with us. It's one resident per class, you apply as a PGY2. Uh, you, you get about half a day of protective research time during your KU outpatient rotations and consult rotation. And then you get up to $5,000 a year for funding for that. Some of the uh, research activities for um, our group here recently, we have sports medicine, PMNR, uh, osteoarthritis and cartilage. We have Journal of Pain uh, and a variety of different um, um, research uh, publications from uh, both faculty as well as residents. In terms of didactics, uh, you have some pictures here of our Zoom didactics as well as our uh, procedure workshop and physical examination workshop that we did recently, but we do a 12 month block covering the uh, high yield aspects of rehab, protected time, uh, Thursday morning, uh, and we cover both lectures as well as procedures, site visits, mock uh, oral boards, and we have presenters from KU, rehab department, other departments and outside institutions. Next slide, please. Left, guys. Thank you. Um, here's just some, some pictures of our uh, workshop um, earlier, I think uh, in the year, we have ultrasound, we have Botox um, and a variety of other stations as well, um, including PGY2, PGY3 and PGY4 as well. So next slide. I'm basically gonna skip the benefits because you can find this information on our website. Um, so next slide and call schedule. This is also available on our website and you can always reach out, but I'll, we do seven day home call. And then basically uh, it's home call. Uh, you work over the weekend covering the inpatient unit and some consults. And then overnight you are basically covering uh, the inpatient unit. PGY twos will do seven weeks. PGY threes will do five weeks and PGY four do two to three weeks with one buddy call. And it's again, home call. Some of our um, involvement with academic medicine, presenting at AAP, um, AAP APMNR, uh, Aspen, Anance, and all other uh, academic meetings across the country. Some of our activities, we have sports coverage. We uh, had a workshop with spinal cord stimulation. Some of our residents kind of got together recently. I went to see uh, the US and Canada game. We won 1-0. Next. And then uh, some other, you know, participations here. We had our graduation recently. Um, some of our residents also did a virtual uh, workshop with procedures um, and then also cadaver lab as well. Next slide. In terms of alumni, uh, we had 100% uh, pass rate for part one recently. Um, our graduates will go both to academic medicine as well as community medicine and fellowships, Children's Mercy in Kansas City, KU, Penn, Michigan, Montfiore, Vandy, Children's National, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and several others, just to name a few. Next slide. In terms of available fellowships that we have here at KU, we have uh, cancer rehabilitation with the rehab department. We have our NAS accredited spine uh, fellowship. Uh, here with the rehab department, we have our repeats rehab with Children's Mercy, palliative care with KU, 
medical center, neuromuscular medicine with KU neurology, pain medicine under KU anesthesiology, and then sports medicine under KU family medicine. I uh, want to let you know that we will be having a meet and greet in September and October, so stay tuned for that. Follow PMNR scholars as well as KU PMNR will be sharing that information. Uh, and then uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, for those uh, virtual meet and greet as well and answer more questions and spend more time um, face to face. Next slide. If you have any additional questions, you can follow us on social media, you can email us. Uh, and also you can email our uh, department at pmreducation at kumc.edu. That's all I have. With that in mind, I'm going to open the uh, floor for questions. You can type your questions in the chat box and Dr. Al, Murphy, Vic, uh, Carrie, Victor, everyone can answer uh, as you see fit. So thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of the virtual residency fair. Got about one or two minutes. We'll give KU for further questions. I did see a question about doing, uh, if you need to do a spine fellowship, if you want to do spine injections, I'd say for basic uh, lumbar procedures, you probably could get credentialed, um, but anything more than that, um, than the basic lumbar procedures, you probably do need to do a fellowship. A lot of it is just health systems and hospitals becoming so much more competitive on what they advertise and having fellowship trained physicians really is probably the way of the future when it talks, when you talk about interventions. Thanks, Dr. Tom. All right, if you guys have any questions, you can email us, you have our contact information and we'll, we look forward to uh, seeing you in the future.